Over the last month, I watched nearly 30 films. That's right, 30. As I came to the end of this past month, I kind of started thinking back on how it is that I watched that many movies this month when I'm also having a full-time job, editing YouTube videos, and just living my life. Upon thinking about it more, I realized I made one simple switch. I cut down on social media time. Anytime I pick up my phone to just mindlessly scroll Instagram, I decided instead to just put on a movie. And day after day of doing that, eventually you work through a movie. After getting into a habit of doing this and doing it enough, I ended up watching way more movies than I normally do. Now this isn't to say I still didn't mindlessly scroll, but I cut down significantly and it allowed me to actually do something I really enjoy. Because I know I'm not the only one who mindlessly scrolls on Instagram just hating themselves, wishing you were wasting your time doing something you actually cared about. And so this month I actually did that and let me tell you, it was so rewarding. It was rewarding buying my time back and being able to spend it on things that I actually care about. Things that actually interest me and brought a sense of accomplishment because I could look back on the day and say, hey, when I rested, I actually did something I enjoyed. So if you take anything from this video, stop scrolling Instagram and start watching the movies you want to watch. But with that being said, let's dive right into this video. I'm not going to go through an entire review of every single movie I watch. I'm just going to speed through a bunch of the average ones and then focus on some of the ones that I really loved the best from this past month. Coming into the bottom, probably the worst movie I watched from this past month was Quasi. And this is the newest film from the Broken Lizard crew, the same crew that produced Super Troopers, which is one of my favorite comedies of all time. This movie absolutely fell flat. It was so unfunny and I had a terrible time watching it. I would not recommend this one. Another movie I didn't really enjoy was a horror movie called Malum. Now, like I said in my initial review of this movie, if you enjoy small indie horror films, I would really encourage you to go check this one out because you might like it because I'm in the minority. A lot of people really liked this film. But as for me, I just found it boring. I found it uninteresting and I did not enjoy it. But I would still recommend it if you like this genre. One of the first movies I watched from this past month that absolutely blew me away was Tetris. This movie was loads of fun. It was such an unexpected good time. Taron Egerton was absolutely phenomenal in it. It was honestly a very tense thriller, which I did not expect from a movie called Tetris. I also finished out watching through all of the John Wick films by watching John Wick Chapter 2 and the original. I'm not going to say any more about these films. I feel like we've been talking about these movies nonstop for the last couple months. They're awesome. They're amazing. Let's move on. I also watched Finding Dory, which was a movie I'd never seen, and I really, really liked this movie. It was not the most daring sequel ever made. They could have taken more chances. They could have done something a little bit more interesting, I think. But all in all, it was a fun, safe, harmless, great little animated film. Another movie that was certainly not safe, swung for the fences and knocked it out of the park is Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. I rewatched that movie this month and gosh, it is such a phenomenal film. It is wacky, wild, off the wall, and just perfect in every way. Another movie I checked out that I'd been meaning to watch for a while was The Lobster. This movie was awful. <laughs> and I don't mean it was bad, I mean it was a lot. This movie is very good and if you enjoy dark, very dark black comedies, you will like this movie. But for me, it was just a little bit too depressing, even for me. And so while I'm glad I watched it, this is not a movie I'm gonna be rewatching anytime soon. Right after watching The Lobster, I kinda needed a palate cleanser, and so I went back into 1960 and watched one of my favorite westerns ever, and that is The Magnificent Seven. This movie is sheer perfection. From the cast, to the writing, to the score, there is not anything about this movie that is not incredible. If you love westerns, or if you just love classic movies in general, give this one a watch. After watching Watching that it actually put me down a path of just watching all westerns for like a solid week and so right after checking that one out I went to the remake of The Magnificent Seven that came out in 2016 and that movie is definitely not as good as the original. Honestly with each passing day as I think about it more and more I dislike this movie more and more. It's just so bland and by the numbers which is just so depressing when you have the original that is just perfection. If you want to watch a great modern western remake check out 310 to Yuma. That movie is a fantastic modern western with amazing cast an amazing story, and just hits all the right Western notes that you want. Another Western I checked out that had been on my watch list for so long, but I just never got around to watching it, and that is The Salvation. This movie stars Maz Mikkelsen, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, and Eva Green, which is an absolutely stacked cast for such an unknown film. This movie's basically a modern Josie Wales, and while it's not as good as the original Josie Wales, it really is a solid film. And if you enjoy Westerns or any of the cast, you will have a great time with this movie. Shortly after watching Magnificent Seven while I was in 1960s mode, I went back and checked 
checked out some early Elvis films, starting with Jailhouse Rock and then moving on to King Creole. Now, I have a blast with both these films because I'm a big Elvis fan, but even if you're not an Elvis fan, I would recommend checking out Jailhouse Rock. It honestly feels like you're watching Rebel Without a Cause mixed with a Gene Kelly film, just in the way that it blends that 50s cinema paired with rock and roll. It's just so great. And you cannot beat the iconic Jailhouse Rock scene. Fun fact, actually, Gene Kelly himself was on set the day that Elvis Presley was filming this. The more you know. A couple movies I went to go see in theaters this month. I went to go see Air, and this movie was great. Nothing more to say. Take your dad, take your mom, they'll love it. I went to go see a double feature of Renfield and the Pope's Exorcist. Now, Renfield, if you enjoy Nick Cage, you will enjoy this movie. If you don't, you probably won't get anything out of it. But the Pope's Exorcist, this movie was awesome. It was a total surprise. And honestly, this might be one of the best exorcism movies that I have seen in recent memory. It really plays with the Catholic lore so well, and Russell Crowe gives a fantastic fantastic performance. I know this one was getting dogged out by the critics, but don't listen to them. If you like exorcist movies, check this one out. In keeping with the horror theme, I watched through a bunch of Evil Dead movies this month because I went to go see the newest one, Evil Dead Rise, in theaters and had a good time with it. But after watching that, I kind of wanted to go back and see the other ones just for comparison. And after watching through a couple of them, honestly, the 2013 remake has shot up to my favorite of the bunch. And that's crazy to say because that one for years has been probably my least favorite of the bunch. But something about it recently just jumped up to the top. I just love how hard hardcore and grisly it is. It just stands alone when it comes to horror movies. On a lighter note, I watched The Greatest Showman, the Hugh Jackman musical from 2017. This movie's really fun. It brings all the joy of like an animated Disney movie to a modern musical, and it's really great. While it's not my favorite musical of all time, it has some really solid musical numbers, and it's definitely worth a watch if you haven't seen it. Another movie I finally got around to watching was The Last Duel. This was the 2021 film from Ridley Scott that completely flopped at the box office, and after watching it, that makes me very sad because this movie was phenomenal. I kid you not, this is now probably my favorite Ridley Scott film. I'm not gonna say that for sure because I need to go back and see it again in the future. But as it stands right now, this movie was absolutely amazing. I loved everything about it and I honestly think I loved it more than Gladiator. And the last movie I went to go see in theaters was Sisu. This movie is basically John Wick meets Inglorious Bastards with a touch of Mad Max. If that sounds cool to you, you will like it. If it doesn't sound cool to you, you will not enjoy this film. It was really good. I liked it. Not my favorite film of the month, but it definitely had some fun action in there. Another movie I went back and revisited for a second time this month was Don John. This is the 2013 film from Joseph Gordon-Levitt. This was his directorial debut, and he absolutely knocked it out of the park. You probably haven't even heard of this movie because a lot of people didn't see it, but if you're a guy and if you've been in a relationship or if you haven't been in a relationship, this movie is a must watch. I remember I watched it when I was younger and it completely changed my perspective and re-watching it again now as an older person, it hit me even harder now. This film is just fantastic and completely slept on. So if you haven't seen it, I would definitely recommend giving it a watch. And coming to the end here, we have the new film from Ari Aster, Bo is Afraid. Now I just posted my review for this and someone in the comments rightly asked, did I enjoy this movie? Did I not? Am I recommending it? Am I not? Because they could not tell from my review. And I honestly still don't know what to say. This movie is my favorite movie of the year so far. I loved everything about this movie. I've thought about it pretty much every day since it came out and it has had a tremendous impact on me since watching it. But I am so hesitant to recommend it to anyone because it is so weird. What I'll say is this, if this movie interests you at all, read the synopsis, check out the trailer, just look into it a little bit, see if it piques your interest. And if it looks like something that you would enjoy, you very well might and I would recommend going to check that out. But if you look at the trailer, you watch it and you're like, eh, this seems a little bit weird, you have no idea how weird this movie is gonna be. So I would recommend not watching it. And last but certainly not least, we have Superman 1 and Superman 2, the Richard Donner cut. Blake from My Best Friend Hated John Wick 4 fame and I went to go check this out the other week. There was a double feature at Regal, which was super awesome. And so we got to see Superman 1 and Superman 2, the Donner cut on the big screen, which was such an amazing experience. But I'm gonna hold my thoughts on that because Blake and I put together a podcast that is gonna be releasing over this next week for you to check out where we break down our thoughts on both films, go into details on it, give our thoughts, talk about our interesting theater experience that we had. So definitely be on the lookout for that. That will be coming out shortly. So that's it. That's everything I watched over this past month. Honestly, I'm still in shock that I was able to get in this many movies in one month. It makes me happy to look back and see that I was able to cut out stupid activities I don't care about and replace them with stupid activities I do care about. And I think that's a distinction we all need to make in our lives and look at what is important to us, whether it's stupid, whether it's serious, no matter what it is, if it's important to you, it's not stupid and you should make some time for it. Let me know what you guys checked out this month and also let me know what you're gonna 
gonna be checking out this next month. Make sure to drop a like on this video, but definitely remember to subscribe because like I said, the Superman 1 and Superman 2 videos are gonna be coming out really, really soon and you are not gonna wanna miss those. Thank you guys so much for watching. It really means the world. And as always, don't forget to enjoy everything.